Good afternoon everyone and welcome to First and Right Television. Welcoming you today to the house topic of torture. When or where is torture appropriate in Canada? When, where, on whom, and why? Why? Torture is unacceptable at the best of times. Torture is a stand in defiance of human rights that is unacceptable from any point of view. Since the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms is about right and freedom and is the law of the land, it has been overheard that a Stephen Harper had took upon himself to allow torture of Canadians and we understand that torture is never with any reason. Torture is not about reason. Torture is about defiance of reason. Torture is about defiance of human rights. When one is in right, to use torture over it to overcome right by force is wrongful in the law. When Stephen Harper has taken upon himself to open the door to cause human rights abuse, to overcome right in the first place, Stephen Harper crossed the line. Stephen Harper went from despot into major league dictator in the same league as said previously Augusto Pinochet or Idi Amin Dada, who routinely tortured for any criminal motive thereof. Augusto Pinochet, Idi Amin Dada, Stephen Harper, all in the same breath. Stephen Harper, in defiance of Canadians, in support of an upcoming planned major nuclear attack on a people in right is in complete defiance of the law of Canada. Fact is the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms does not support giving material support to others engaged in aggression. Stephen Harper is yet again engaged in defiance. A reminder, not a stitch of print in support of Stephen Harper in the law, nor of Stockwell Day, nor or of Victives, or Peter Van Loon, Tony Clement, John Baird, not a stitch of print a protection markup that's over. Back to torture. The incessant repeat repeating of a word of the dictionary for over two years, night and day, to a citizen who is in not who is in right not to hear it. What do you call that? 
What do you call the incessant breaching of a citizen's right? Not to hear any of it. What do you call that incessant breaching when you have two agents, actu actual contractors, that are here without a license? Question arises, where did these contractors get their training? Where does an unlicensed contractor get his torture training? His training to conduct torture on behalf of Stephen Harper's despot. On behalf of Stephen Harper's stop welding. On behalf of Stephen Harper's victims. Where does one get the training to conduct torture on Canadians? And how is it that a contractor is allowed with what training or not training unleashed over a citizen without training in torture or with training in torture in that case where does a contractor get training to conduct torture night and day where does a contractor get accreditation to conduct torture night and day where does a contractor in Canada, Stephen Harper, get accreditation to conduct torture night and day? Otherwise, it means that your torture that you have cited in the law as to you acceptable? In House of Commons, that's the law. Stephen Harper, when you, say, when you cite torture as an option for you to conduct on Canadians, what is it you mean, Stephen Harper, your torture contractors, where do they get their training in Canada to conduct torture, Stephen Harper? For instance, where does David Ayer in Canada get his training to conduct torture of Canadians? Stephen Harper, answer. Where does one in Canada get training to conduct torture? In Canada, Stephen Harper, where does a contractor get training to conduct torture? Again, is otherwise what you have is a situation of amateurs that have no training, no overarching structure, and nothing separating them from three card monties, Stephen Harper, without a stitch of legislative support. Stephen Harper. How does a contractor come about? to run torture contracts on Canadians, night and day repeating the same word of the dictionary over and over and over and over for over 24 months now. Stephen Harper, those, when we hear what we call that torture, repeating over and over in aggression, night and day, waking people up at night, shouting, shouting to wake them up and then recite the same page of the dictionary over and over. There it is again. Stephen Harper. Answer. Where does a contractor get training in Canada to conduct torture on Canadians? And the corollary question of that, Stephen Harper, is amongst Canadians, since no reason is necessary for a dictator or a despot to conduct torture on construed said political opponents, i.e. the law to Stephen Harper is an opponent. So here's the law seated in front of you, speaking to you through this lens. This is Canadian Charter Rights and Freedoms, Rural Rights Express Evidence, speaking to you. You are either with the law or you are against it. The law stipulates rule of right takes precedence. You're either with it or you're not. Now back to who in Canada is, according to Stephen Harper, it's a complete nobody to my right. Or who's talk all day or who's uh, victims. Who in Canada stands, according to you, qualified to be subjected to torture by untrained amateurs that only conduct torture because 
likely they wound up in a contract torture business because they enjoy it. So I see that as soon as someone finds out from inside that indeed there hasn't been a crown with Canadians for 30 years now, then according to Stephen Harper, Paul Bernardo himself would likely qualify to run contracts for you, Stephen Harper. To be quite honest with you, I find that, I find that rather unlikely and rather unbelievable and to let you know that your practice of torture we Canadians in right and freedom frown upon your what do you call that? Sir Harper offense is what we call that Canadians we Canadians Stephen Harper frown in the face of your offense of our rights and freedoms when you speak of torture as necessary for a tin pot dictator and despot Stephen Harper.